Hi, this is Little Dwarf playing games while rambling incoherently into a microphone. Why? Well, just because I can. And I continue with Vampire Blind. I am back in the morgue and trying to square off against the boss. I don't foresee much success, but I don't know what else I can do in the meantime. Like, I certainly need blood. That much is sure. Green. I'm kind of torn or, you know, it's debatable if this uh, knife uh, with the bloodletting ability is actually better than hitting them with the stake and drinking from them. Because sure, it replenishes blood with every strike, but it replenishes very little. So I'm, I'm not actually sure how do they compare in terms of effectiveness. It's certainly a little annoying to have to dance around so much to replenish the blood. Huh. Yeah, I don't... I don't see it. I don't think this is, this is going to work particularly well. Okay, I guess that was effective enough. Okay, let's say the opening to that fight was actually halfway decent.
Okay, maybe this can happen. If not this time, then maybe next time. Although I should have perhaps changed uh, my secondary weapon to the stake. Hmm, okay. This is not... Mm. This is not going horrible, at the very least. Mm, he says, seconds before dying. I'm dead. I'm super dead. Mm.
Damn it, he's going to heal. Okay, maybe I can do it. I just have to be careful. Like, if I died now, I would be kind of heartbroken. 
these okay. skulls can be so ferocious. I'm not sure I can defeat them without becoming stronger. Oh, to drink blood is so tempting. Yeah, to be honest, it kind of is, because I'm definitely very weak. Like, I'm so weak it's not even funny. I've literally been running around this room for like half an hour. Sodium hypochlorite. Dangerous to administer, but efficient in the proper dosage. Okay, anything else around here? Um, you have enough components to craft a medicine, a treatment for fatigue. Yeah, but I did that already. I, I have enough of those. And clove essence has been used since antiquity due to its strong antistatic properties. Anesthetic, rather. Okay, treatment for cold, bronchitis, pneumonia. Okay, those will surely be useful in the future. Uh, but do I have anything else to gather here? A watery rich sample and a formula. Uh, Mm, enigmatic formula, you say. Is it a quest item, perhaps? What's my actual current objective? Is it to get back? Did I uh, gather all of the ingredients? Uh, reach the pharmacy. Ah, that's a different quest altogether. Uh, a pharmacy is, is in some other district, I guess. Uh, but the main quest... Um, Craft the treatment for fatigue, but I did already. Oh well, if you insist, I'll craft another one. Uh, but what about that thingamajig I just picked up? Mysterious formula or whatever? Uh, blood diary. Survey mission death report. Crumbled letter. Blah blah blah. Hmm. Okay, I don't quite know where it went. It's not in here. Hmm. Okay, let's craft that cure for fatigue if we really want it that much. What now? Bring the medicine to Dorothy Crane in the patient room. Okay. I guess I can do that. Is there anything else around here? Hm. I'm still not sure what happened with this mysterious recipe or whatever it was. Well, let's go back, I guess. That was pretty tough, all things considered.
Hmm. Okay, if I if I died right now, that would be kind of embarrassing. After everything I've just went through. Uh, it's definitely possible though. Oh, in fact I am dead right now. Okay, that was totally not an efficient use of anything. At least I guess I'm glad I survived at all, even if only barely. Okay, let's get back to the hospital. Finally, you've returned, Doctor. Did you find anything of value? Yes, Nurse. You've worked your first miracle, Doctor. Now, this patient here needs immediate treatment. Duty calls? When the storm has passed, I'll show you how to mix the remedy yourself with the same basic ingredients. Many thanks, Doctor. When you've finished, you ought to report to Dr. Swansea in his office. He's been looking for you. Seemed pressing. Okay, diseases can decrease blood quality of a citizen, use the correct medicine to help them. Speak to the patient in the room behind Dorothy to check his medical status, but I did already, I did already heal this guy. Good evening, Mr. Goswick. How are you? I'm okay. Do you need any help? Thank you, Dr. Reed, but you've done enough already. The rest is up to me now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is recovering. I have to go now, sir. But don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help. So let's go finally go and talk to uh, Dr. Swansea. A blood temptation. Remember, citizens' blood will provide you a massive XP boost. Look for the citizens of your mesmerized level or below and choose wisely. Yeah, to be honest, I'm not that big of a fan of this kind of uh, moral choice system where it's tied to your like progression or your your gameplay rewards because it's very easy to ignore this uh, as a player because I can just try over and over and over and over again via the use of reload so it doesn't pose any actual like ethical question because 
you can sidestep that question entirely uh, via the use of the game mechanics themselves. Like, it's not as if I am compelled, uh, you know, to actually get stronger because otherwise I might die. Because even if I die in the game, I can just repeat. Whereas in real life, obviously, uh, it would be a different situation because I would have only one life, as it were. Um, so, so then the temptation would be real, but it isn't really real in the game. So I prefer the moral choices to be more about the shades of grey and about presenting you with different options, uh, you know, all of which are kind of dubious. Uh, in the game's universe in terms of ethics so that, that that way I can actually be engaged in this choice and I can ask myself actual questions of what what would I do in this situation whereas this I find myself a little bit detached because sure I can ask myself what would I do in this situation but it isn't uh, like replicated very well because as I said the fact that I that my character is not strong enough is not um, like the, the temptation to change that is not particularly strain, uh, strong because the game mechanics themselves uh, um, give me you know an uh, infinite opportunity to retry should I fail. Um, so overall, I don't think it's that great of a system, but well. Please, Jonathan, come in. Fascinating, is it not? In the last decade, so many mysteries have been brought to light with our microscopes. The human body, biology's penultimate frontier. The more we explore its boundaries, the less we're able to trace a clear line between life and death. <laughs> you, my friend, have a foot in both countries. The view must be vertiginous. It's at least as vertiginous as chatting about vampires with you, I would say. This must be all so new to you. This area of town, the hospital, a brand new life. How stimulating it must be. I wish I could share your enthusiasm, Dr. Swansea. But my condition defies scientific categorization. Undead? Unalive? Immortality defies logic. I cannot express my thrill at this serendipitous turn of events. The world's most eminent specialist in blood transfusions, a vampire. One might say a gift from heaven. Eh, uh, to be honest, I find his overall giddiness to be a little bit uh, uncaring. Like, it's a little bit insensitive for him to be so happy about my, uh, about me being an undead monster, because it's clear that for Jonathan it is a problem, you know, he doesn't view it as a gift or any of any kind, uh, quite the opposite actually. Yeah. But there is an absurd poetry to my situation. Physician, heal thyself. Forgive me. I've been an admirer of your work for a long time, and now you are so much more than a brilliant physician. And please, call me Edgar. I'm not some doe-eyed student, Edgar. I understand we both have something to gain from this relationship. Very well. I have a task for you, Jonathan. Something that will require all your newfound skills. Please, go on. The Pembroke only survives through the generosity of our benefactors. Unfortunately, our main donor has found herself in a bit of a bind. Now, if you could help her out... A spokesman or politician is what you need. That's not my calling. And until I come to understand what has happened to me, I require discretion. Discretion is in order, Jonathan. Lady Ashbury has recently received rather indelicate correspondence that, if revealed, would jeopardize her position. And you would like me to eradicate this threat? By the stole, of course not. I would just like you to pay her a visit. 
Her ladyship is certainly near the tents outside, tending the sick. You can't miss her. Look for someone impossibly delicate. Accepted. I'll see what kind of trouble Lady Ashbury is in. Hmm. Do you need something, Jonathan? Yeah, I have a couple of things to talk about, if I can. I have just a few questions. Then ask away. I'm at your service, Doctor. Since I'm the one working for you, what should I know about Pembroke Hospital? Well, for many years, we have been the only medical facility in this part of town that people can rely on. We support the community here, as well as provide health care. Where do we stand today? Well, to be honest, we cope on a day-to-day -day basis. The first wave of the Spanish flu last summer took us by surprise. We lack many of the basic necessities needed. What do you expect of me? What we need is hope. You were a soldier. This is a war. This white coat's still a uniform. We fight to help the poor, the sick of the East End, the forgotten. Since you seem quite the expert on vampires, what could you tell me about my condition and how it came about? As men of science, our first step is always to start with what we know. Forget the myths, the hackneyed scrawlings and the penny dreadfuls. They do not scratch the surface of the truth you now find yourself in. Must I take a life to live? You are a vampire. You feed. And blood is the sole sustenance that can sustain your immortal frame. And only a living creature contains the nourishment you require. The sun. The morning following my transformation. Its rays burned me. There was pain, smoke, and my skin blackened. You will find there is very little that can kill a vampire, my friend. You have been offered relative immortality. The sun will most certainly hurt you, leaving you weakened and damaged. But it will not destroy you. You mentioned something about a secret society. A brotherhood, if I recall. Could you elaborate? Certainly. I've been a member of the Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stole for several years. We are pledged to monitor and report vampire activity in England as impartial scientific observers. That explains your nightly wanderings about the docks and the questions you ask. I feel it wasn't mere coincidence that led us to that part of town. There was something as yet unseen that set those chain of events in motion. Yet you don't fear me. And still, you know the monster that lurks beneath the civilized surface. The Brotherhood has studied your kind for centuries. We believe you are as supernatural as a lion is to a gazelle. The man we pursued and slew in the canning factory, William Bishop, I believe, was he a vampire? He was a skull, technically speaking. The debate rages as to their classification. Some think them a subspecies of vampire, others something else. Just for clarity, what differences are there between myself and a, a skull? A skull is easier to eliminate, Jonathan, even if they remain formidable foes for the unprepared. Vampires... Now, vampires exist beyond the mortal realm. Where do... how do skulls come into existence? The name means slave. The etymology may indicate that they are a lesser species of vampire. From what I know, vampires tend to despise them. Hmm. That, that doesn't tell me how they are created. Now, what's the difference between the creation rights for a proper vampire and for a skull? And also, it seems I have no way... I have just a few questions. Then ask... Uh, it seems I have no way of actually 
First of all, informing him about the fact that Milton and uh, Nurse Hawkins are extorting people for money, which I wanted to do. Second, I have no option to inform him about the fact that Dr. Tippetts has killed someone because of a medical mistake and, uh, and Nurse Branagan is covering that up, which I would also like to do, but I can't, so that's kind of weird. Hmm. Oh well. We'll see each other again soon, Edgar. Let's explore his office, I guess, before I leave. Uh, rare species of vampires. Uh, as a scholar and exegate of ancestral writings, I would never insist enough about the importance of taking legends and ancient folklores into account when searching for the hints about the hidden or lost secrets. A common mistake is to take what we know for established truth and use it to discard any contradictory material. For example, we must consider a possibility of undiscovered species of vampires and the necessity to rethink what we think as the established truth about the various types of immortals based on what we know and what we've gathered through time. For how many centuries did we consider that vampire was the vernacular term for what we, what we had learned today to call econ? Until the day the, uh, four explorers of the Brotherhood found proof in Siberia that Vulcods were, were a lupine type of vampire, we have considered these creatures to be linked to, to the mythological werewolf. Now we, we know that it is not true. What about the rest? What about the Rakshasa from my homeland? What about the Chinese Jingxi or the Penchuan of, uh, or the Peu Chen of southern Chile? Uh, and without even leaving the beautiful Great Britain, what about the stories of the bat-shaped women that are sometimes seen flying around the St. James' Church in Louth? What about the creature only identified as the disaster in some obscure testimonies which tried to destroy London uh, in 1666 by spreading a plague all around the city? What about the Nimrod? The mythical figure of restless vampire hunter, sometimes described by ancestral British Ekans as a legendary huntsman who only feeds on his prey's blood and could got, go unnoticed among the mortals and immortals. I tell you, my brothers, we have never, we can never be too sure of, of, of what we can find. If only we could forget for a few minutes what we are supposed to already know. From Unveiling the Truth by Usher Tolltree Primate of St. Paul. Okay. Uh, it's, it's mightily rude to go around uh, looting his office in his very presence. Uh, but oh well, such is the, such is the way of games. Um, warning letter, Pembroke Hospital, 25th of October. Dear Dr. Swansea, I must inform you that must my, of my deepest reservations concerning Dr. Thoreau Strickland and Harvey Fiddick case. Mr. Fiddick has been hospitalized. Uh, after a severe work injury, uh, he may permanently lose the, the use of his arm if not treated adequately. Dr. Strickland claims the surgical procedure may save the man's arm completely. I say it may also serve its functions for its... Uh, oh, it may also... Sev severe s what it, it, it may also sever its functions for good if complications arise our young colleague is an audacious and daring surgeon who might prove a great professional in a few years but for now he lacks the skills to perform such a risky procedure need i remind you of the mistakes he made in the past since dr strickland refuses to listen to me I strongly advise that you forbid him from performing such a hazardous experiment. Very respectfully, Dr. Waverly Ackroyd. Okay, so this is about the differences in their approach to that case. I'm still undecided myself which way should I lean. I was kind of hoping that uh, Dr. Swansea would kind of intervene on that. But I guess it's going to fall on my head uh, if this guy loses his arm or his life. Letter of Rakesh Chadana, uh, Pembroke Hospital, 4th of August. Dear Dr. Swansea, it will be 
uh, glad to manage the temporary morgue as soon as it's opened. I have already told you I was a doctor during the war and I would be glad to serve my country again. I know it's not the same as being the... Uh, I know it's not the same being a phys physician for the dead as it is for the living, but I believe it is important to welcome and take good care of our departed too. Rest assured I will be... I will do my best to fully perform this new duty to the best of my ability. Concerning questions of my qualifications, I'm sorry I can't give you anything more viable than my parole. I swear to you that my regiment made me a doctor during the war and that I have saved many lives. If my word is not enough, you can contact the military administration to verify my experience and skills. They will confirm that even if I never followed any medical studies, the war taught me what a doctor really needs to know. Always sincerely, Arakesh Chadana, former doctor. Okay, I don't think that's wor that works this way. Like, at best, he can be some kind of a... What would you call it? Like a felcher? A pa paramedic, basically, or something? Like, I, I think you can't go around claiming that you're a doctor just because you've administered first aid to wounded people uh, on the field of battle. Like, th there's, you know, med school, even back then, medical studies, uh, th they are one of the mo most complicated fields of uh, science. You know, you can't, I, I don't think it works this way. I don't think I buy his story about being a doctor because... Uh, he learned it in practice. Like, I don't think that's how you're supposed to do it. Uh. It's locked. I will actually talk uh, with him about that. Uh, and I also talk with uh, Strickland about the procedure. Shift never end. Good evening, Dr. Strickland. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Can I be of any help? Tell me, Thoreau, what's the real cause of your dislike for Dr. Ackroyd? He refuses to admit that your blood transfusion technique is the only way to save Mr. Fiddick. I'm convinced we must use it. What Dr. Ackroyd really said is that you oh. lack the skill to perform this operation efficiently. Is there anything you have to say about this? It's a false conceit. Dr. Ackroyd secretly envies your reputation. His jealousy blinds him. I'm not the real target here. Hmm. Why can't I do it, then? Do you need my medical attention, dear colleague? You don't have to worry about me, Dr. Reed. I am here to assist you, not to be a burden. If, if Dr. Ackroyd uh, doesn't have at least according to that letter, doesn't necessarily have the problems with the method itself, but rather with the fact that Dr. Strickland is not experienced enough to do it correctly, then why can't I do it? Especially if it's using a method of, of transfusion I've uh, been, you know, familiar with, or I've even discovered or, or practiced in the past. Have you heard any talk of blackmail going on? If you're running some official inquiry, you had better question the patients. They know more than the staff, especially old Miss Jones. Hmm. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. Okay, I wonder if Ackroyd himself has anything to say. Good evening, Mr. Goswick. How are you? I'm okay. Have you heard rumors about blackmail in this hospital? No. I have to go now, sir. I'm all right. Don't waste your time with me. Good evening, Mr. Fiddick. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Any news about my operation? Have you heard talk of any blackmail here at the hospital? No. Nothing. Okay. Goodbye for now, Mr. Fiddick. I will not let you down, my boy. Hmm, where is Dr. Ackeroid? Uh, I want to talk with him as well.
Good evening, Dr. Reed. Such a pleasure to see you again. Have you heard of someone blackmailing people in the hospital? Pardon me, sir, but I have no idea what you're talking about. Tell me the truth about your appointment as a medic during the war, Rakesh. The regiment administration appointed me by mistake. I had to learn the job on the spot, sir. Very hard, sir, but I rose to the challenge. Yeah, I, I do think you can't impersonate a doctor, like, come on. I, if he has, uh, you know, um, some actual skills, then surely he can find work as a, you know, as a paramedic equivalent or like a nurse. Although, presumably, uh, at the time, it would have been uh, sort of seen as disgraceful for a man to be a nurse if they even could. Presumably they, they could if they really wanted to, but it wasn't common, like it isn't common even nowadays. The gen gender disparity in the nursing field is very strongly, uh, you know, uh, is very strongly in favor of women. Mm. But, 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 but I, I do think he can't impersonate a doctor, like if he, if he only knows what he did uh, learn in practice, then I think it's, uh, first of all, um, first of all, it's, it's, uh, it's disingenuous to, pre to, to present himself as a full-fledged doctor, but second of all, I think it's also dangerous, because he, he can clearly be uh, easily faced with challenges he's not prepared to actually, uh, you know, uh, to actually face. You can't impersonate a doctor. You can't improvise a medical education. People could die at your hands. You're absolutely right, sir. But as a field surgeon, it was more like being a butcher. Do you believe you have really helped these people? My ratings were within the averages of the regiment. I saved lives, Dr. Reed. Does that not say enough about triage and war surgery? Well, to be honest, it says uh, it, it does say something about the state of, of battlefield medicine but it doesn't mean that it's a good idea for this guy to pretend that he's a doctor well apparently i can't do anything with that for now uh, please show me what you have to sell of course it's just trinkets and curios really but i'm sure they can be useful Hmm, we don't have that much uh, money any, any, anyway, so I don't think I am going to buy anything. Hmm. Okay, where is, uh, what's his name? Ackeroid. I'm quite busy right now, Dr. Reed. Have you heard about any blackmail going on in this hospital? Blackmail? Nonsense. Hmm. I, I, I asked that already. Right? Tell me, Waverly. What do you think of Dr. Strickland's enthusiasm for his experimental research? Strickland is playing with his patients' lives for pride and glory. Now that, sir, is unethical. Are you thinking about something in particular? Harvey Fiddick needs delicate surgery. I believe we should stick to the usual procedure. But my young colleague obviously disagrees. Yeah, yeah, we, we did mm, talk about that. Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. Good evening, Miss Howard. How are you tonight? I need blood, Doctor. Warm, rich, vibrant blood. Have you heard of any blackmailing going on within these walls? I have no time for mortal games. My secrets are beyond their comprehension, Doctor Reed. I'll leave you, Mistress of the Dark, to your nocturnal activities. Time has lost its 
effect on me. But the suffering continues. Good evening, Mr. Elwood. Evening, Dr. Reed. Have you heard rumors of underhand dealings in the hospital? If you want to know what's going on here, you better talk to Miss Jones. She knows everything. Especially what she should. Goodbye for now, Mr. Elwood. Hmm. Who even is Miss Jones? I cannot enter. Is it? Hmm. The nurses are Branigan, uh, Hawkins, and Crane. So that's not a nurse I'm looking for. But I don't, I don't remember any female patient with that name. Hmm. And generally speaking, I'm kind of confused. Unless there are new patients on the outside, maybe? Good evening, Milton. Good evening, Doctor. Still trying to save lives. Have you heard of any underhand dealings going on in this hospital? There are a lot of secrets around here. I'm not surprised someone tried to make money from them. What kind of secrets? I'm not in the gossip business, Dr. Reed. If you want to know more, you better talk to Harriet Jones. She's the oldest patient here. Hmm. Goodbye, Milton. I don't think I met her. Where is she? took my dear wife Emily I take comfort knowing we'll soon be together again <coughs> Mr. Rainfield that's no way to talk you're in good hands here and we'll be up again soon enough <coughs> now do me a kindness and get some sleep I'll be back round later your words are kind the blessings of an angel you're the sweet sweet lady of mercy Good evening, Dr. Reed. It's a pleasure to see you again. You seem surprised. Dr. Swansea has brought me up to speed concerning your recent appointment to Pembroke Hospital. You're a vamp. The lady who saved me that night, before vanishing into thin air. I remember you from the pub with Dr. Swansea. Indeed. Allow me to introduce myself formally this time. My name is Lady Ashbury. I remember you well, in spite of the brevity of our encounter. Okay, so... Mm, okay, I had to pause for a second during... Well, actually, I had to go away from the computer during this very conversation. And in fact, I'm not entirely sure if all of it played while I was here. Uh, I guess... Because I'm kind of confused by those... What was the last thing she said? She said that we met? No, no, uh, Jonathan said that we met because she saved me... Well, saved me. She, Yeah, I guess she did save me in the encounter with William Bishop. And then she disappeared. Uh, but what does the, what does I feel play uh, have to do with all of this? Like, what what's the play? I guess let's choose this because this is like... The, the, the inquisitive option, but it's not necessarily positive or negative. It's just a question. So it seems our Dr. Swansea does indeed have a fascination for creatures of our constitution. Dr. Swansea is a remarkable man. Dedicated, one might say, obstinate? He spent years compiling our bestiary. I hope you're more disposed to answer my questions now. You must have countless questions, but our rather urgent matter first. Swansea has explained. My cover, if you prefer, has been compromised.
Have any of the patients given you trouble? These poor souls have so little left to live for. I do my best to ease their pain. Uh, uh, um, I guess I have no reason not to believe her. Like she seemed to be, a, she seemed to have been genuinely comforting this man, and it's not like it's not like she knew. I doubt she knew necessarily that I was coming. I doubt she did it all just to show off. So I guess for now I can say I believe her. The world would be a better place if it were cared for by women like you. You make me blush. I am simply a necessary evil. Pardon my boldness, your ladyship, but I have questions concerning this condition we share. As a newborn, your hunger for answers is rivaled only by your thirst for blood. But the questions need weight. I'm a scientist. My trade is in the deciphering of mysteries, and I need information to feed my mind. I will gladly answer every question you have, but first, prove yourself capable of resolving my predicament without eating the culprit. <laughs> okay. Dr. Swansea has commissioned me to be your agent in this matter. You could start by explaining what's amiss. These past insufferable weeks, I've been the victim of extortion. I've made a first payment, but the blackmailer grows greedy. I must refuse his most recent demands. Who would be so foolish as to threaten you, a kindred spirit? Even if it were the case, and I highly doubt it, a vampire would have asked for something more valuable than money. My suspicions lean toward a patient or their family. Mm, so that's 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 why all the questions about blackmail have appeared in dialogue with other people. But it seems a little bit backwards because obviously I didn't know at the time uh, before talking to her that that uh, any specific blackmail attempt has been happening. So it's been a little bit weird that I've been going on asking about that before talking to her. What are your expectations? Please be precise. As the newly appointed surgeon of this hospital, you are in an excellent position to ask innocent questions and deftly learn the identity of my blackmailer. If we're dealing with an ordinary criminal, surely you've the means to deal with it yourself, if I may. As immortal tradition doth dictate, all fangs and hypnotic eyes ablaze. The blood would run like a river. That's what I hope to avoid. Violence has a tendency to spiral out of control. Please continue. Every detail is essential. I'm your man. My embarrassment in this matter is eclipsed only by my shame at having put the hospital at risk. The threat from our anonymous scoundrel is clear. A list of dates. My visits coinciding with the dates of suspicious patient deaths due to massive blood loss. Mm. Is it true? Now aren't you the blunt one? Well, I guess the question is, were they already dying from something? Or did she kill them uh, uh, in the process of, like, were they more or less okay and then she killed them to feed from them? Or were they already dying and she just uh, quickened it? We both are afflicted with a thirst for blood, Lady Ashbury. That is our nature. By vocation, we also have reason to visit the hospital. Logic dictates. In all honesty, I'm not simply a patron to the hospital. My visits serve a dual purpose. Dr. Swansea has been treating my condition with a revolutionary technique of blood transfusion. It seems you are a specialist in the domain. I'll take care of it. Do you know where I should start? If that was the case, I'd settle the matter myself. 
You could talk to our local gossip, Harriet Jones. Not a pin drops here without her hearing about it. I'll meet that woman now. My life, as others know, is in your hands, Dr. Reed. I'm sure of your discretion, but I do fear your powers of persuasion will be put to the test. When this is resolved, I'll be your obligé. I'll answer all questions in regards of your condition. Okay. To be honest, I have no idea where that Harriet Jones is supposed to be, but uh, presumably I can track it in my uh, quest log. For now, I feel like this episode has been long enough, so just me, let me just quickly uh, talk to Harriet in the hospital. In the hospital. Well, maybe she's behind the locked door. Maybe it has opened now. I'm not sure. Okay, this is the other guy in the sewers, right? I still also don't know how to get to him. Uh, but that will have to wait. Mm. Yeah, that, that will all, all have to wait, because this episode has been more than long enough. So I'm going to pause it here. That's all for this one, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.